Welcome to the fourth video in my trail marathon training and racing guide. This video is all about the best trail running gear to get the job done for your training and your race. So like I said in the previous video, this is all gear I use myself currently. I go through a lot of gear, I do a lot of testing on trailandkill.com so I have a very good opinion of what works well and what doesn't. This stuff is the real deal. Now you've put a lot of hard work in your training so it's important to make sure you're using gear that doesn't give you any troubles come race day. Now, there's so much gear out there um, but I'm going to break this down into three sections. The first one being the essential gear that I really believe you need for your training and also in racing. Then the next section is some gear that will definitely help you during your race and training but it's not 100% necessary, you don't need it. It's only going to tear you up to the next level should you need that or want that during race day. And the final section is going to talk briefly about the mandatory gear for your particular race. You'll have to check your race website. Some big international uh, European races require you to have certain equipment whilst racing in the mountains. So I'm going to go over that in the third section. This gear list doesn't include things like nutrition choices, electrolytes, um, salt tablets, that kind of stuff. I'll talk about that in a later video which focuses on nutrition for trail marathon racing. So the first essential item of gear is going to be trail running shoes. Now these have to be really durable, high performance and of course comfortable. If you don't have comfortable shoes then you're going to have a horrible race. So if you're not 100% sure what the terrain is going to be like for your race that you've chosen then you're probably going to want to go for some all mountain trail running shoes. These are shoes that really work in any situation, any kind of terrain, any kind of weather, climate. For example, during your trail marathon race, you might actually have to run on some road sections during it. And if that's the kind of race that you're going to be running, then it's important to have somewhat of a hybrid trail running shoe, which also works well on the roads, gives you enough cushion and padding to make it comfortable running fast on the roads. If you don't have shoes which are capable of carrying you over certain terrains during your race then it's probably going to affect your confidence as people start running past you and you have no idea why. It's probably because maybe you're not so confident on particular parts of this race during specific terrains or you're slipping over when other people aren't slipping over and you're thinking what why are they not slipping over this isn't fair. Well it's probably the type of shoes they're wearing and they've Maybe they planned it out beforehand and they picked the right shoes for the race. So anyway, I'm here to help you choose the right shoes for your particular race. I'm going to pop a link up here because I've previously written an article on trailandcurl.com before which outlines all the different scenarios that you might encounter whilst trail running and I've listed all my favorite shoes for those different types of scenarios and this also includes things like Tough Mudder or Spartan races. It's a really fun list and tons of information on there that is really going to help you. So definitely go check out that Ultimate Trail Running Shoes Buyer's Guide. Definitely bookmark these buyer's guides that I'm going to give you as well because I often update them as and when I try new gear and say I try a new pair of shoes that are better than what's currently at the top then they are going to be at the top for next time you look at that list. And for all this gear that I'm mentioning in this video I am going to mention my current favorite item even if it gets outdated in the future that's why I want you to bookmark the buyer's guide so that you can see what my current favorite is. So my current favorite all mountain trail running shoes are the Nike Pegasus 36 trail. They're awesome shoes and to find out why go check out that ultimate buyer's guide and I have reviewed them here so definitely check out that review if you're really interested to find out more about those shoes in particular. Right, the next item of gear is a hydration pack or also known as a hydration vest or race vest. It's all the same thing. It's a vest that you wear that carries your nutrition, your essentials, your water, all that kind of stuff that you need to take with you on your race, including your mobile phone. Your race vest is what you absolutely need to do that because you really don't want to be putting this stuff in your pockets. Many trail runners nowadays will own at least one hydration pack because they come in different sizes. But what I'm going to talk about today for trail marathon racing is five liter race packs. So that's what I use for my trail marathon races and that's what I recommend. So it's got just the right amount of storage I'd say for a marathon. Hydration packs are really cool as well, especially if you get one that can carry hiking poles. So what I have is some black diamond hiking poles which I can fold up concertina and then just store away in my race pack 
and I can do all this whilst I'm running, so it's super cool. I don't lose any time during a race. So the things to look out for on a hydration pack is it's got to be comfortable, it's got to be really durable because they're quite expensive and you're going to want to be using this for many years to come. And then the next thing is capacity. So I am looking at five litre packs here for you guys because that is going to be perfect for a marathon race. You can also get hydration packs that take a water bladder. So that's the bladders that go in the back which have a little tube which allow you to drink the water straight from there rather than the alternative which is generally collapsible water bottles. I personally use collapsible water bottles uh, for which I'm going to explain later on my nutrition video but uh, I think you'll be interested to see why I go for that option. So I've written a buyer's guide for hydration packs, five litre size, which I'm calling the medium size really, which is perfect for trail math and racing. I'll pop a link up here. That's got my five top hydration packs and my chosen hydration pack, which I use currently today, is the Salomon Advanced Skin 5 Set. Next item is a technical running hat. You need a hat to protect yourself from the harmful UV rays but also it will protect your face from things like sweat and rain. There's nothing worse than running when you've got sweat or rain in your eyes because if you are doing a challenging course then, you know, it's very likely you might fall over. So be aware of that and get yourself a technical hat. I wear running hats all the time and I've tried so many different brands and different types of hats. I've listed my five favorite ones which are fully technical running hats. Pop a link up here, that's a buyer's guide again which gets updated regularly as and when I test products, so bookmark that list as well. My current favorite is the Buff Pack Run Cap. I love it because it's really packable and lightweight. And it's got this brim, which you, if you follow our Instagram, and our stories, and our blog, you'll see me wearing that hat all the time at the moment. And I love it because this peak or brim, whatever you'd like to call it, it flips up. So the idea behind a flip up brim is if you're hiking uphill, something really steep, and you can flip the brim up and you're able to see into the horizon and see where you're going without struggling because you've got this brim covering your eyes. But then if you're running maybe early in the morning or late in the afternoon, then the sun's gonna be very low on the horizon. So what I like to do is flip the brim down and that keeps the sun out of my eyes so I can see where I'm going and successfully navigate technical terrain. So definitely check that out, put a link up here. That's the Buff Pack Run Cap. Next item that's very important and definitely essential in my mind is a really good pair of running socks. So again, I've been through lots of different running socks. Some get holes really easily, some aren't very breathable and they make my feet really hot and sweaty and I hate that. I find when my feet get really hot that heat rises through my body and gets up to my head and just gets me really agitated and it really throws my mind off focusing on the race at hand. Also a good pair of socks should drain through nice and easily too so if you were to have a river crossing for example then it's good to have a pair of socks which will just drain out. And everyone knows if your feet stay wet for too long then you're going to be very susceptible to blisters and nobody wants that especially during a trail marathon race. So click the link up there to see my latest top five choices for trail running socks. That list is also updated regularly, so bookmark it. And my current favorite is the Elite Socks from Features. They're awesome, buy yourself a multi-pack and save yourself having to go back to the shop. Next one is super important for motivation and also not getting lost on the trails, and that's a GPS watch. A GPS running watch is an awesome training tool for so many reasons. Number one, if you have one which has an on-wrist heart rate monitor, then you can make sure your heart rate stays in specific zones whilst you're training, and nobody knows your fitness level like your heart does. So at any given point in time, you should be following your heart rate really. That is your best performance indicator of how fit you are at any given point in time. I particularly love the Garmin Phoenix because it's got all these heart rate zones set up for you and it will buzz and beep at you when you step outside of those performance zones. So it's got really good reminders to keep you focused and keep your heart consistent when it needs to be. You can think of your heart as your engine and maybe your GPS watch as your efficiency gauge, I guess would be a nice way of putting it. 
that lets you tap into how your heart is doing and how your overall performance is. So what you need to look out for for a GPS running watch is you need to have one that has a long enough battery life that can keep tracking your distance, location and all your body metrics, biometrics as you're racing, uh, which could go if you're running a trail marathon, which is what this whole video guide is all about, then you could well be running for up to seven hours depending on how challenging your mountain marathon is. So you also want a GPS watch that has got actionable features. So it's feeding back metrics in real time that you can actually act on. So that would be things like the heart rate, like I mentioned before. If your heart rate is spiking too much, then you can act on that and reduce your heart rate, go a bit easier, go slower. Another thing would be a barometric sensor. So a barometer inside your watch is going to tell you what your altitude is and your climbing metrics. So if you know how much climbing you've got to do in a race, and you know how much you've done, you know how much you've got left. So you can sustain your energy levels appropriately for what you've got left to do in your race. So that's really great. That's really important in the GPS watch. Also, if you've got a barometer, then the barometer can tell you if a storm is on its way. So if there's a lightning storm coming your way and you're in the mountains, you might well have to take shelter for your own safety. Navigation features. Another thing that my Garmin watch is amazing for because I like to run new trails all the time, so being able to look on the Garmin Connect website, find new trails in my area, because lots of people have already done these trails and they've put their favorite trail routes on there already, so you can just pick them. Or you can create your own if you want to go and explore, you can create these routes and then save them to your device. I absolutely love that because if I didn't have that feature, I'd be getting lost all the time on the trails. And also you can plot the race profile and route into your watch for race day. And this is so invaluable because I've seen so many people go off course during a race and it can sometimes cost hours. If you realize too late that you've gone the wrong direction, then that could be detrimental to your race. And many people will just give up because they feel so disheartened that it's gonna take them two more hours to finish this marathon. So. Definitely look for a watch that has these navigation features. And the great thing about the Garmin Phoenix is how detailed those maps are. Not only can you see the route you need to go, but because it's so detailed, you can see the routes that you don't want to take. So many GPS watches like Sunto and Koros, they don't really have very detailed maps on them. So it will only have a line of the route that you need to go. And the problem with that is you can't see other trails going off your route. So I like to see routes that I'm not supposed to take just so that I know I'm definitely on the right route sometimes. If you're running in the mountains, you want a watch to be durable as well. So maybe look for a sapphire watch face so you don't get it all scratched up if you accidentally hit it on a rock, something like that. It needs to be able to be durable enough to withstand hours in the mountains and any weather as well, so it needs to be fully waterproofed. Next thing is make sure your watch is really comfortable. Can't be too heavy if you're gonna be running for hours, so again, I go back to the Garmin because this is the watch I'm gonna recommend. The Garmin comes in three different sizes, so if you've got small wrists, then you can go for the S version, which is the small one, and you're not gonna be carrying around any unnecessary weight if you do go for the smaller version. I personally go for the medium one, which fits really nicely for me. Then, of course, you need to make sure your watch has got a good software platform so that you can view all your tracks and your activities once you get back from training and racing. Because it's really important to see your history, uh, to see your training progress, to know what direction to take on your future training. And that's how we get better. And then the final thing I would say, if you like listening to music whilst you're running, then definitely make sure your watch can play music and store songs actually on a watch device and not rely on your phone because I personally don't like using my phone battery whilst I'm out on the trails because my mobile phone is my lifeline and that battery needs to be stored for making emergency calls if necessary. So if you listen to music, just make sure your watch can handle that. So they're really cool features that you need to make sure your watch has. Definitely check out my ultimate GPS running watch buyer's guide up here. It's regularly updated. So definitely make sure you bookmark that in case you're coming to this video at a later date. And my favorite watch right now is the Garmin Phoenix 6 Pro. I'll pop a link up there so you guys can check that out in the Garmin store as well. That is the watch I trust with my navigation 
and also the watch that can do all those features that I mentioned earlier in this video. There are of course other great GPS watches so definitely check out my buyer's guide which lists them up here. If you're going to be running in the mountains then the next essential item you're going to need is a waterproof running jacket. Many of the big races will actually make that item mandatory because you never know when a storm's coming and you don't really want to get hypothermia. That could be life-threatening so you need to make sure you can stay dry, keep your core dry and a waterproof jacket is what's going to do that. You want to make sure you get a jacket that's fully waterproof, not just water resistance and you make, want to make sure that it can fit in your pack very easily so it's got to be very packable down to a small size. Follow the link up here for my ultimate buyer's guide for waterproof running jackets. My current favourite is the Arcturix Northern SL jacket. It's super lightweight and minimal and it's expensive but there's a reason for it because it's so minimal and lightweight. That is why it's expensive. I'll pop a link there so you can go check out that as well if you're interested in that one. And my final essential item is a protective case for your mobile phone or cell phone. Your cell phone, as I mentioned earlier, is your lifeline when you're out on the trails. If you have an emergency, you fall over and you need to call someone for help, that phone is 100% your lifeline, so you need to protect it. We personally use the brand called Rockform, and the case we use is the crystal case. It's not 100% waterproof, but that's okay because our iPhones are waterproof anyway. The great thing about it though is it's super slim line, and I can put it in my shorts pocket or my hydration pocket without having the bulk of one of those really big iPhone cases because they also carry a lot of weight as well and I don't really want that when I'm racing. So if you're not sure which case you want to get, I definitely recommend the Rockform Crystal case. I'll pop a link up there now so you can go check that out. Okay, so the next items are not 100% essential but they'll definitely help with training and your trail marathon race. The first item being collapsible trail running poles. So also known as hiking poles or trekking poles. These are poles that help to stabilize you when you're running. They also give you really good rhythm when you're going uphill. It's a little hack, let's say my performance hack post that I mentioned in a previous video. The poles also take muscle power away from your legs and put them onto your shoulders and arms so you can spread the strain across your body a little bit more. And it means that you can do more hills for longer in the mountains. And you want your poles to be super lightweight, carbon preferably, and definitely collapsible so that you can store them away in your hydration pack. Click up here for my ultimate trail running poles buyer's guide that lists the five best trail running poles in my opinion and my favorite at the moment being Black Diamond Distance Carbon Z poles. They are the lightest and most durable poles that collapse the concertina as well so very easy to store in your race pack. Next up, not essential but if you love listening to music whilst running get some wireless headphones. I recommend the Jaybird Vista wireless headphones definitely the best ones that I've tried and I'll pop a link up here for the review on those. They're awesome, very lightweight, they stay in your ears whilst running and the battery life is absolutely insane. So even if you're ultra running, those headphones are going to be awesome for you. Uh, I'll pop a link up here now which will go to the Jaybird Sports store as well so you can just go check them out in the store if you prefer to do that rather than read my review first. As a reminder, I'm going to be putting all the links that I'm mentioning in this video down below in the description of this post. Next up, not essential, although I always wear sunglasses whilst I'm running. If they're not on my eyes, then they're on my technical running hat up here. But I love them for a few reasons. Of course, they protect your eyes from UV rays. If you get polarized ones, then it stops the glare from uh, any shiny objects as well. So that's really nice. And also, if it's a bit cold out and you're running really fast, it stops that cold air getting in your eyes and helps alleviate watering eyes when you're running in cold weather. So I always wear sunglasses. I'll pop a link up here for our ultimate buyer's guide for running sunglasses. Again, it's regularly updated, so definitely bookmark it. Next up is a lightweight running headlamp. If you're training for a trail marathon in the winter, then you're gonna have to run at night um, or at least in the dark because the days are much shorter and you're, you're not gonna have as much daylight. So it's really worth investing in a good headlamp. Again, some races, some big international races will make the headlamp mandatory piece of kit. So definitely check on your race website and see if you need to get a headlamp as well. I'll put a link up here to my five favorite headlamps. That's a buyer's guide as well, regularly updated like all the rest. Definitely bookmark it. That's got some awesome headlamps up there. 
But personally, what I'm using at the moment is the BioLite Headlamp Pro 30. It's super lightweight. The power is perfect for trail running in most situations. And the battery life lasts a long time too. And I love that you can adjust the brightness on the headlamp so that you can make the battery last longer if necessary. So definitely check out the BioLite Headlamp 330. I'll pop a link here so you can check that one out. Now, if you're running in cold weather, then you're probably gonna need some gloves for training and also racing. And again, some races make gloves mandatory. Check your website to see if um, those are mandatory for your particular race. But I only wear gloves in super cold weather. I'm not gonna be training in gloves in the summer. Definitely not. It's hot enough as it is. So anyway, check out our Ultimate Buyers Guide for gloves. I'll pop a link up there. If you're coming to this video in the winter, then that's definitely gonna be useful for you. Oh, excuse my cat, he's going wild in the background there. He gets excited when I talk about gloves. I have no idea why. Okay, so the last section on this gear video is all about mandatory gear. Now, I'm gonna keep this section really short because this is very dependent on the race that you've chosen and factors like the difficulty of the race and whether on the actual day of a race affect what mandatory gear you might have to take with you. So I really recommend that you follow the website of the race that you're going to be participating in and they will definitely be keeping you up to date on what kind of gear that you definitely have to take for that race. But depending on the difficulty of a race and where you're racing, you could be required to take things like crampons so that you've got traction on your shoes if you're running in icy sections on glaciers, anything like that. You may also need to have a headlamp if the race is so challenging that you're going to be running into darkness, then headlamps are a very common item of gear to be mandatory in races. Also, you could be asked to take a waterproof jacket, like I mentioned before, waterproof trousers, a whistle, your phone, and even extra water sometimes. So check your website and hopefully they will be able to tell you exactly what you need for your race. Well, let's wrap this video up then. I know it's been a really long one, so thank you for sticking with me on this one. Uh, I hope it's given you some ideas about what gear is necessary for running and what gear is definitely gonna help you, but not all that necessary. And hopefully me telling you why I use the gear and how it's helpful for me during racing is really insightful too. So I wanted to do this video and I wanted it to be as detailed as possible because it is interesting. I love gear and I know a lot of other people out there do as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. The next video is gonna be quite meaty as well. And it's all about how to fuel yourself during your race and during training for your race as well. And in that video, there's gonna be loads of tips about how to eat whilst you're running so you save time and also how you avoid those nauseating gut bombs and all those kinds of horrible things. Right then, let's get to it. The next video is waiting for you.